and before you know it, I'll end up off screen. All right, uh, obviously um, we start every week with uh, the fast facts at Speed UTV. Uh, as you see, we have a, a new photo here. Um, basically have some more design features done. Um, pretty excited about the way the car looks and the direction it's coming. Now you can see the front end has, has started to come along. Uh, you can see the headlights, you can see the running light underneath. Uh, this bottom running light here will turn into a fog light. So uh, you get into a foggy situation, you'll be able to turn off your high beams, turn on this, this bottom light uh, under the grill, and, uh, and that will turn into a, a fog light for you. Uh, as you see, the, the UTV is, um, is starting to come together. And obviously you're seeing the whole thing being orange, but this section back here is black uh, because that'll be the bottom side. Um, people will get to choose their colors uh, when they do these cars. So you will get to choose your color options. Uh, this will be on a, a charcoal uh, base uh, plastic to start with. Are we working there? Everything's okay? All right, we start every week with uh, questions from last time. Uh, Rod Milliken, um, he asked, uh, does, any know, does anyone know the width of the carbon seats? I'm kind of a fat bastard, I guess, and was curious um, what size they are. And I'm gonna click over here, a few pages down, there we are. And yes, uh, we have already started to address this. Want to make sure that everybody knows these are just molds. These are two seats that are completed. Uh, these two are two different molds, and we will have a variety of speed carbon seats available. Um, the driver's seat will be, um, you will get to choose the size of the driver's seat. All the other seats will come as our, as our base seat here, which will be this carbon seat here. Um, and that'll be the rest of the seats inside of it. Uh, materials, you'll get to, to pick a little bit of material as well. Each car will have a number on it. So the reason for the number plate over here is everybody will have a number plate and your order number will pop up there um, at the first, uh, first 500 cars, but those are gone. So don't plan on getting a 500 number. You're already into the sixes today. Pretty exciting. Um, so five different styles of seats. Uh, we will have what we call a, a big boy seat, which is tall and wide. Uh, we'll have the normal guy, which uh, I'm probably closing in on the big boy seat, but um, at the same time, uh, we'll have the normal standard seat. Then we'll have uh, a headrest con uh, containment seat for, for racing, and we will also have, uh, let's call it a, a small seat, which would be more of a female seat. So if it's a female that buys the car and she wants to have a seat that fits her, uh, we got a variety um, with and without headrests. Questions, um, better understand torque limiters. You said there'd be a clutch and would it be independently similar to one-way bearing? No, this is not a, a four-wheel drive race car. This is a, this is a UTV still, guys. Um, it's a UTV that is, is four-wheel drive, unlock front diff and four-wheel drive lock front diff. But the torque limiters, um, will they allow you to adjust brake bias? Not really. Uh, they're still kind of connected together. Uh, through the center drive shaft, but there is a torque limiter at the front diff and there is a torque limiter in the rear diff. And what the torque limiters are for is for the, the high spikes. Basically, when you, when you have a spike because you landed on the gas and you, and you spike the, uh, the car or the drivetrain, um, hopefully it slips two or three revolutions. And we'll get into that. I've got a, a slide here towards the end that I'm gonna get into. I'm gonna actually go into UTV fails We've been looking at a lot of those videos. We don't recommend 99.9% .9 of the stuff on this website, but as a, as a designer and a manufacturer and you see what people are out there doing, uh, you gotta understand what potential the industry potentially is and make sure we can do on our side everything we can to keep these guys as safe, guys and girls as safe as possible. But there is some stupid stuff on UTV fails that I, I'm pretty brave and I don't re recommend probably 90% of the stuff. Another thing is I don't ever recommend uh, drinking and driving a UTV. So some of the stuff on there, I'm pretty convinced people are, are not using their heads. And we'll get into that when I, when I get back into speed or UTV fails. Uh, Mary uh, Clayson Peterson, um, what is the difference between the four seater and the truck? 
One says limit edition. All right, let's talk about limit edition real quick. There is three limited editions. The first 500 speed UTVs in the four seater, the first 500 in the UTT, and the first 500 in the two seater are all limited edition vehicles. Uh, so you will, you will be a limited edition vehicle if you pre-order with us for a car prior to the cars actually hitting the distribution marketplace. So everything comes with um, carbon seats, uh, five point seat belts, um, racing style steering wheel, a roof, beadlock wheels, speed tires, a bunch of cool features will come on the limited edition. Uh, it's about a $5,000 upgrade. So plan on if you bought a base model later on, uh, let's say you buy one next year, summer 21, if everything you're gonna get on that car is probably gonna cost you somewhere around $37,000. There's about $5,000 in upgrades that we're doing for all the people that jump on board with us and help us grow this brand right from the get-go. Got a bunch of cool other things we're gonna do for the fi first 500 of each orders and um, I'll keep giving you cool, exciting things as we get closer, but it's, uh, it's been a very good um, design process, engineering process, and like I said, the car is, is definitely coming along. Uh, let me talk about the three limited editions. Like I said, there'll be three limited editions. There'll be a limited edition four-seater, there'll be a limited edition UTT, and there'll be a limited edition two-seater. Today, we're still gonna talk about four-seater because when we design the four-seater, as I said before, I'll back up two slides. Everything we do on the four-seater, the only thing that changes is in this section right here. When we change the section right here, we make it a 95 inch wheelbase, two seater with a little bit more spread there. We change this spread, the roll cage and the back. And you can imagine from about this point on, you can see a 50 inch long bed by 48 inch long bed for a UTT. So I think we've answered the, the three questions for this week. Um, I've showed you guys some of the uh, display stuff a few weeks ago. Uh, as we ad advance every week, I start sharing more stuff with you as we get farther through the design process and the testing process. And we'll continue to do this all the way till November. So I plan on doing these Wednesday night shows every Wednesday night prior to launch of the vehicle, uh, which will give you guys an inside look at what's coming and what we learn every single week. What we learn in engineering, what we learn in design, what we learn with features of the vehicle. Here pretty soon you're gonna see some cool testing feature videos and we'll show you dyno tests, we'll show you calibration tests, we'll show you um, all kinds of, of stuff that other manufacturers don't share with the general public but I'm here to, to show you guys why we designed the car the way we did and why the Speed UTV is the best UTV in the industry. Dash, let's look at dashes today. Uh, we will have multiple display modes. I'm gonna zoom into each one. Uh, we will have multiple display modes on the driver dash. This will be the driver's dash, it's a 10 inch dash. There will be an option for a remote dash over on top of the glove box for the passenger to have the same dash and be able to read different display items. But here's one, uh, one view that we've got. It has obviously differential lock, battery voltage, AR ratios, it's got engine RPM, it's got barometric pressure, it has idle, it has, uh, is the four-wheel four -wheel drive on, that was diff lock over there, we'll probably put those in the same place, engine oil temp, water temperature, air temperature, and we still have a few more options over here on this screen. On this screen here, this will just be a standard screen, this would be your speedometer, um, I think we're going to go a little fast at 250, uh, I think we're dreaming there a bit. And then obviously RPM, we believe we're gonna be right in here between the eight and the nine range on RPM. Uh, this is another screen here. It's, that one's a little blurry for some reason. Uh, but one thing cool about th these two screens, I'll zoom in um, as you download and look at the, um, at the presentation on UTV Underground's been showing every week. I don't know if they're gonna show this week. If not, you can go to Speed UTV and see the presentation there, which will give you a better view. But this is a pretty cool feature. It still gives you all your parameters, your engine volts, your water temp, um, different, different items that you may wanna monitor. The cool thing is the center screen. The center screen allows you to screen mirror from your phone. By screen mirroring from your phone, you can get your Google Maps, you can get Find My Friends. 
Uh, we will have a Speed UTV app that you'll be able to find all Speed UT vehicles. We will also have a Speed UTV trail system where you'll be able to go see the trail systems. Uh, actually, I need to get that one plugged in. Sorry, can you get a charger for that one? Um, it's about ready to die. Did it die? Okay, yeah, it's about ready to die. Sorry about that. Forgot to charge my cell phone here um, before. And then here's just a little different screen again, which gives you a larger display of the map. But, you know, if you think about it and you got all your buddies riding around Glamis, provided you pre-program these things and run on the GPS on your phone, you'll know where all your friends are at Glamis as well. As well as we can set time parameters, how long it takes to go from Glamis store to Oldsmobile, how long it takes to go from Oldsmobile to Lookout Point, Lookout Point to Flagpole, Flagpole over to Swing Set or to Airplane, and then obviously, um, over to Dooner's Diner, how long does that take? What is the fastest speed that's ever been done? Um, there'll be cool features that we'll be able to do that, uh, that people have not seen in this industry before. Seats, we talked about seats a few minutes ago. Uh, we, uh, we will have five seat options. We will have three options of the standard and we'll have three options of the, uh, the full enclosed race seat. Uh, these seats on the left will be the three seats that will be your options. These will be speed accessory items. This is what we use in the stadium super truck. So we've advanced the stadium super truck seats. I've got some pretty cool um, features that we, we just got our first articles, but I actually now have these, um, these secret air cushions that I've been using for about the last 10 years in off-road where the bottom of the seat is a bunch of micro cells. Uh, Casey, you want to grab one of those out of that um, out of that speed seat right there, and I'll open it up. But uh, we've had our own seat pads made where we can control the um, the pressure in in each bulb. And with that said, that will allow us to um, to have a more comfortable ride and a better bottom out bump zone. Thank you, Casey. Can you hold this for me for a second? I'll open this up for you real quick, kind of show you what this is. But this is the seat cushion the bottom speed seat cushion. These will be available. I will have these cushions available at McKinsey's and CarTech uh, in the next few weeks. But this is a air cushion that we have designed. Um, it's been used before in the wheelchair industry, um, but for off-roading, we had to make it a bit thicker, a little more durable, put a coat around the outside. But what's nice is you can blow this guy up and when you sit on it it changes the pressure across all so it really disperses the load under you um, this is one of the secrets I've been using on stadium super truck for a while and we couldn't find any more so we ended up just making our own which is pretty cool now we have a, a speed seat cushion uh, which will give us a little more performance in the seat uh, environment as well uh, a little more comfortable for those all-day rides So not only are we designing cars, we're designing new seats. We're trying to design multiple seats that fit different drivers, multiple steering wheels. We've got a new steering wheel design that's new to the off-road industry so we can see our 10 inch screen. Um, we've got new tires for the off-road industry. We've got new wheels, new engine, new drivetrain. It's, it's been a, it's a 24 seven a day project right now, but it's getting done, it's gonna happen and we're excited about it. All right, let's show you a little bit more about um, the, the engine, and we'll talk about engine because every week we, we learn more. Um, this engine ports are designed by IndyCar, NASCAR racing motor experts. Uh, we've used a lot of the guys in the industry for their advice and help with design. I wanna, I wanna thank everybody over, over at Arrington's and the guys over there because they've been a, a big help to us. Uh, we've optimized the flow and uh, efficiency and also minimize the hot spots inside the, the head. We have bumped it up to 12 millimeter spark plugs. The reason we bumped it up to 12 millimeter spark plugs is we feel like we're gonna have more cylinder pressure with this engine than what anybody's seen before in the UTV industry. And we got dedicated cooling circuits for ports and for spark plugs. As you can see from the side, the guys have really worked on the exit flow, so when it exits out of the valve train and out the exhaust and into the turbo, we've got the flow optimized the best we can. And I think these are some pretty cool shots inside, but 
you know, there's really no need to port and polish this baby because it's all done right from the factory. So another thing that you'll be getting on your Speed UTV is a reliable engine, but also a performance-based engine. So because we're performance-based, we'll be able to tune it way down to be able to get that 230 horsepower. And when I say way down, I mean way down, tuned down to get 230. And 230 will be the leader in the industry as a production UTV right from the get-go come November. Um, patented uh, all-wheel drive trophy truck, unicorn inspired bulkhead. As you can see, um, you're, you're getting to see more and more of this, but this is very similar to what we are using on the trophy truck. I'm blocking the screen, thank you. And um, all the suspension points are located right on the front diff. So the diff case is the suspension mounting points on our Speed UTV. Very different than anything ever used before in the off-road industry. I think any industry, to be honest. Gearbox, uh, the first three-speed shiftable CVT gearbox in the industry for a UTV. So we will be three-speed. We will have the largest input shaft of any input shafts in the market. Uh, we will have the widest gears of anybody in the market, but we will also use the best material possible at the same time with torque limiters, which will absorb a lot of that load on the gear. And industry uh, exclusive torque limiter clutch. This has not been done before as far as I'm aware. It happens before the ring and pinion. So between the input and the ring and pinion is where we have our torque limited clutch. I have seen a torque limited clutch in a rear end before, not in a gearbox, but I've seen one in a rear end before, but that was more at the, at the input shaft down here. We have done it before the input shaft and we've done it where the spike load is between the engine input and the drive of the axle input. I'll talk about that in our UTV fails at the end of the show, why we put these torque limiters in and what we're learning watching all these things out there running. The videos you guys post, the videos we see from UTV Underground, uh, all the stuff out there, we're learning every day how to make one the safest vehicle in the industry, but also make you the most reliable vehicle in the industry as well. Front differential, we've talked about this a few times. This is where we have our torque limiter on the way in. Uh, this will eliminate spikes going between the front tires and the back tires as it's accelerating over the big hoops or under big braking. You know, I've, we've broken some of these front discs before, just stabbing the brakes on the pavement and locking up because you get your most amount of grip on those front tires when you're on the brakes because you got all the pressure down on the front. Wheelbase, we've talked about the wheelbase. When I first started over to my right over here, um, we have our Dakar vehicle, 77 inch, 110 inch wheelbase. That's the middle of the road car in Speed UTV. It is 110 inch wheelbase, 77 inches wide. That is the UTT. Over on my right, we have our prototype four seater. The four seater is 120 inch wheelbase. I believe today that's the shortest performance wheelbase four seater on the market. The new Razor is 125 inch wheelbase. And that shorter wheelbase will help us one on the trails, the narrow trails, but it will also help us in the sand dunes from getting high centered. Longer wheelbase might ride a little bit better, but I think the optimum four seat wheelbase is 120 inches. I've got an upper view here that gives you the width. We've had a lot of questions. Hey, I've ordered a speed UTV. Uh, how can I find out if it's gonna fit in my trailer? So the widest point on the car from this point to this point is 77 inches wide. Uh, Daniel did a nice job here today um, putting this presentation together. Uh, this question is frequently asked. Um, the widest width on the body is 65 inches. We bumped up our, our fender width just a little bit over what we've done in the past. Um, overall length uh, is 41 inches. I guess we didn't put that on here. We are 41 in, next slide, previous, previous slide, okay. Uh, overall length, oh, there we go, is um, 41 inches. 41 inches on top of your wheelbase. So when you work on your wheelbase, front to rear, front to rear, we are 41 inches longer than your wheelbase. So if we're 120 inches, that means we're 161 inches overall on your four-seater from the front of your front tires, which is your leading most point, 
to the back of your rear tailgate. Hopefully I answered that. Uh, people that have slides, 6.5 inches from the outside sidewall of the tire to the fender. 6.5 inches will be your width. 6.5 inches inset from the fender. Car, um, every, every day, um, you know, when we start putting color on it, I've been showing you guys, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, paneled colors. Um, somebody asked me, what they asked me earlier today, if it's the mystery car, um, because we used all the, the mystery colors. Um, that is for us to determine where the panels separate and how they bolt on the car. Uh, but this has got a quick, simple scheme, something we can do on the computer. Um, the guys did this here at the shop today, and it really is starting to stand out. Uh, back here in this area, you'll see right here, this looks orange and it kind of looks a little boxy here. I'm going to shut off my screen mirror for a second. I'll bring you back to a photo just in a second and show you what it's really going to kind of look like. It kind of flows a little bit better that way. So give me just a second. All right, as you can see, we, if we panel that in black there, this really gives you the body flow. You're looking at the bottom side of the rear tailgate trunk is what you're seeing. You're seeing the bottom of the bed there. Uh, that will be more of a black charcoal color hidden. Uh, that's what it'd look like more with the colors on the car. Obviously, you put a roof on this thing and it starts to look really cool. Um, we've worked on the hood. We've worked on the headlights. We've got our line of sight down in these areas. We've got fenders up front uh, for the mud, but we've also got the fender where it clears a 35 inch tall tire at full bump, both front and rear clear a 35 inch. There will be a trim line that you'll cut off when you go to your 35. It'll be a light little trim line built into the bodywork, so you guys will know where to move it to. All right, give me a second here. Wheels. Uh, we'll talk about wheels. I believe we have more wheels in this presentation. And also, heated windshield, closed cab version. Heated windshield on the closed. These guys are asking for. They're asking for everything. They want defrost on their enclosed cab. All right, enclosed cab comes summer of 2021. Obviously, all the things you're talking about is stuff that we had to address on our Dakar Gordinis back in the day. And it's the same things we'll address when we go to build the enclosed cab car. We are designing this car. So this car behind me that we are designing, we are designing all the body work. So it's easy to put a closed cab here. From here down, this will be a closed cab car inside, sealed as best we possibly can uh, to keep the dust out, okay? But when you go to a closed cab car, Honestly, you're gonna be better off buying a closed cab car. Will you be able to convert it? The answer is yes. But you're gonna to have to move your radiator from the back to the front. You're gonna to have to move your AC condenser. You're gonna to have to add a bunch of features on. Honestly, there is a difference between a closed cab car and an open cab car. Currently today, launching in November, will be our open cab cars, just like what people saw. Not exactly like they saw, because this is obviously a big step forward from what they saw at Sand Sports, but they will be open cockpit cars coming out in November of 2020 as our first 2021 models of Speed UTV. There's the front view of it. Um, obviously, we don't have our panels in here, so it's you're seeing a bunch of other stuff with other cover, colors, um, but it looks really good when you, when you cut it out and just make it individuals. Uh, there's a simple side view for you. Like I said, this will all be black under this area. So you're seeing it orange, it will be black. It won't be as noticeable. Uh, the body would flow a lot better if that was kind of covered up there, um, but gives you a side view. Uh, as we talked about, we have uh, the first to the UTV industry as a production car, the FIA A-Post. Um, that is a requirement for SCORE, Best in the Desert, Dakar Rally. Uh, one thing we've done with the Speed UTV car is we have built you the closest to race car in the history of the UTV industry. All right. Uh, we're talking about needing a door bar and maybe an X in each door. And you're pretty much legal for Dakar Rally, SCORE, Best of the Desert, anywhere you choose to race these cars. We're not building them as race cars. We're building them as play cars, fun cars. Um, please remember that 
if you want a race car, we will build, we will build uh, per, uh, speed UTV race cars uh, for you guys. So the guys that want to really build a race car, uh, stay tuned because we will build you one of those. And I've seen some of the prices on these cars and you will get a carbon fiber proper race car for less than what's in the marketplace today. You'll get a real race car. Um, this is back to our colors that when they asked if we were building uh, the Scooby car with the mystery car. Uh, this allows us really to identify where our panels are and how they flow together. And when we change panels out, because when we go from the four seater to a two seater, this red panel here comes out. It'll get a different color panel, obviously in for the two seater. It literally disappears and this flows perfectly back together. The four seat, the UTT, this will have a small filler panel here. Roll cage will be a lot different than what you see here. Uh, it's, it will still have the A behind the driver's head, but it will look different. Uh, and it's gonna look different with the closed cab versus enclosed cab as well on the UTT. There's another side view. Like I said, I'm really starting to like where this thing's coming out. Um, we've taken that hump out of this front side here. Uh, doors got just a little bit higher. We'll work on keeping those as low as possibly can. The doors drop back down here. That's so this panel will flow with this panel when we make it a two seater. So when we make a door for dealers out there looking at taking speed UTV on, your driver's door will be your same driver's door, two seat, four seat, UTT, all vehicles, your hubs, all four corners, your wheels, all four corners, your suspension left and right, uh, your A-arm suspension left, as right, left and right as well. A lot of uh, repetitive parts have been built into the Speed UTV. There is the truck, as you see here, the cab. Uh, I wanted to show you the truck again. As you can see, this panel here changed, this panel here changed, this panel here is still the same fender. This panel here is still the same bed. It just changed from this point back. This roll bar will come from here to the top of the shock. So on the two seater, you're gonna see a longer bar right here. As you go into the A, this will be vertical. It won't be leaned forward. So that'll be standing up straight. That'll come in the UTT enclosed cab. We may consider changing the rear roll cage in this area. But one thing nice is it unbolts. It unbolts here, here, and here we can change different roll cages for different cars. It also gives the aftermarket industry an opportunity. Two-seater, here's the two-seater. You can see where these, these doors flowed together. Now that's just gonna kind of flow right in here and be one piece. Uh, chassis, uh, seamless tubing, uh, 095 cage. So the roll cage is score and best in the desert legal as well as King of the Hammers legal. You saw Max and myself race this year's Mint 400 with the Textron XX. That was the first two as close legal off-road race car in the market. Uh, I believe that is the safest cage in the market today. And there's a, even more features now on this car that makes this one safer. I'll zoom in here and show you. We've added in this post, this orange post right here is what we call the A. So if you're gonna make this a race car, you would need to throw bars across here and you can throw a diagonal across each of those or X if you wanted to. Um, there's a few options that are legal per race series, have different options. We will pre-fit these tubes for you. So they will be pre-fit, pre-coped, and you will be able to buy these tubes as an accessory to weld them into your car if you choose to make this a race car. Um, this point right back here is very important. It ties into the shocks. We've talked about the spine before. These bars are bigger on the Speed UTV, so we have bumped them up to inch and a half tubing. Uh, these have gotten a lot bigger than what we had before. And the reason for that is just more structure and more safety. As we watch this stuff, knowing that this car is gonna go faster than a double X, it's gonna have more power than double X, it's gonna have more suspension and bigger tires. Uh, we wanted to make sure we bumped up the roll cage as well for you guys to do everything we can at Speed UTV to make it the safest car in the industry. Tires and wheels. We will have two wheel options. Um, this We've kind of settled up on these two wheels. Uh, we have our, our 14 spoke Speed Concave wheel. 
Uh, this is a one-piece outer, one-piece outer beadlock. Uh, this is a new wheel that we designed for the Unicorn. It's something we've adapted right over into the UTV market because as we're looking at building the best car, we felt like we needed to design the best wheels in the marketplace as well. This is the best wheel for kingpin inclination. This is the best wheel for CV angle as well. So about five years ago, the UTV industry was not using any flat face wheels. I brought out the double X. All, you know, all of a sudden, as you see, all the wheels are now flat face. The reason for that is you can get more wheel travel and you can get less CV angle with a flat face wheel. So we took it another step and brought it to a flatter face wheel one more time, put some patents around it. We've got ourselves a patented forged front wheel, rear wheel that is a bolt together wheel two piece. Uh, we will bring back the OG RG wheels. Uh, this wheel here will be a, a flat face with slight concave to get us as much um, wheel travel and kingpin optimization as possible. Tires. Uh, we have gone off and decided that we are going to build our own tire. Uh, we have partners in the off-road industry that are willing to help us. Uh, we will use experienced um, tire manufacturers to help us, but there will be a speed UTV tire with speed UTV treads coming on tire, and we will make this tire in three different treads. We will make a, a low tread, a tall tread, and a mud tread. So you'll get three choices of tread. Obviously, that's gonna be a difference of what your tire weighs and what the best um, riding condition might be for your tire. Uh, you can kind of see the, the tread pattern again there. Uh, these are our Speed S's, um, but when you stand back and you look at a lot of tires, I can, I can pop over to the trophy truck. Uh, the Speed S is not far off of where we were before. Uh, as you look over here to this car next to us, um, very similar, uh, except for we will have our own pattern so that if you're riding with your buddies that are in Polaris's and Can-Am's, they will know where you went because they'll be able to follow your treads. Uh, as I said, there is the tire and wheel again. 10 inch wide, 32 inches tall, um, 32.5 inch tall, uh, 15 inch wheel, beadlock, and we have a collaboration with our partners in the off-road industry that we will use one of our partners that we currently have uh, to produce our tires and wheels. Bed size, uh, a lot of question is, do you make a spare tire mount? All right, so one of the things when you look at the Speed UTV, there's no reason for a spare tire mount because you have the bed. You have a massive bed to be able to put the tire in. The bed is 48 inches wide on the inside, 35 inches deep. So you could slide your tire over to one side and still have room for your cooler and your sleeping bags or whatever you may want to take with you on your day trip. So big bed. Uh, pre-mounted spare tire and we will put some screw down holders inside the bed that'll be easy for you to do it in the center or offset left or right. We will provide those for you. We will also provide you uh, whip mounts built into the chassis. So you will get a whip mount built in and you will get the whip lights pre-wired up to the bottom of the bodywork. So basically when you turn on your headlights, you will have your whip lights as well, nice and easy to install. Shocks. Uh, we have entered into the shock industry. I know people have known that I've made shocks for the last 30 years, maybe longer. Uh, we have done an internal bypass, 12 inch stroke, 360 degree spinning reservoir with adjustable compression and rebound. I believe 360 adjustable compression and rebound separately is the first to the off-road industry. Um, dual rate springs, fend reservoir. Hydraulic assist steering rack. So as you've seen the, um, the steering rack here, uh, this is a pretty similar to a trophy truck steering rack. You guys getting some questions there? We got a question from Kyle LaDuke. Kyle LaDuke, how you doing buddy? What's his question? I'd love to be able to put one of these through its paces and give you uh, badass content to sell the hell out of these cars. Are you down? Todd LaDuke, I'm always down. Todd or Kyle? Kyle? Kyle LaDuke, I'm always down. You know, we, um, 
We almost teamed up together for last year's Baja 1000. I think Kyle LaDuke is an excellent race car driver. Um, I'm a fan of his work and his family's work. Uh, Todd can fly that monster truck farther than I would want to choose to fly it. And obviously Kyle, both of them are, are excellent drivers. And Kyle, I reached out to you last week. Sorry, I've been slammed. I will get to you and um, definitely want to talk to you. You know, the only problem I see is your relationship with Monster. I don't want to put you in an awkward position with Monster because we are speed. But respect you and respect Monster and what you guys are doing out there. And I'm a fan, so thank you. Engine, uh, we talked about steering. I didn't really get to finish the steering. Uh, it's 1.75 ratio. It has less than a degree of bump steer through 25 inches of travel. It gets a little bit of bump steer down at full droop, tries to tow out just a little bit as anybody has designed cars, but we wanted to set a mark that gave us a lot of wheel travel. We could limit this thing up to 22 inches of wheel travel and have zero bump steer through the whole travel. But I'm not too worried about it when there's no weight on the tires. Hydraulic assisted, it does have a ram in it, it does have hydraulic ports, it does have a very similar rack that we've been using on stadium super truck. Um, this is something different here. You'll notice that this has been spread. It's more of a spread bore. The reason for spreading the bore is so that I can bring the internal pivot points closer together and optimize the bump steer. So it looks a little goofy, but if you understand the tie rods pivot off this point and to be able to travel off this point, I would have to move the tie rod here, which wouldn't allow us to get the bump steer out of the car. By doing this and building a steering rack that is different than what the industry has seen before, it allows us to put our, our tie rods um, at the proper center point that we want and not have to have a huge amount of bump steer like a Polaris or Can-Am. Motor specs, 230 horsepower, um, 300 horsepower on E85. This is a 999cc. It is a turbocharged engine. It does have two injectors per cylinder. The reason for two injectors is as we add boost with RPM, we can add more fuel at that point and control detonation and knock. So we do have that. And we have four valve uh, dual overhead cam. We got another question over there? Nope. Okay, I see people smiling, so. Um, bore and stroke, we've talked about this pretty much every week. 98 millimeter, 66.2. This stuff has not changed in the last three or four weeks, and we are about a week away from being final on all hard castings, forgings, body work. We have till the end of this month to be done, 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 and we're closing on it. We're up against the wall, but at the same time, we still wanna share this with you guys every week and show you what we're doing so that people have invested with us in these cars. They know where their money's being spent and what we're doing to develop the best car in the industry. Forged aluminum upright, so it does have a forged aluminum upright. It has the same bearing on all four corners. It bolts in. It's got the same hubs. It's got a finned res rotor, but when you see the rotor going the other way, remember this isn't a vented rotor. This is just a finned rotor, so it is going to go different directions on the other side. Uh, I'm not that worried about it, and we are using eight bolts to bolt this rotor into this hub so that we make sure with these big 32-inch tall tires, and the braking force that we put in this car, we don't rip the rotors off the hubs. So, something we have addressed. We've addressed shoulder bolts. Next week, I'll get into you and explain to you all the bolts we've done, all the speed bolts we put in all the suspension components and all the pivot points, all the steering and all the shocks. Every high load point, including sway bars, is shoulder all the way through, custom made bolts with the exact same wrench head and nut head on both sides so that you don't have to carry a bunch of tools in your car to work on a bunch of different suspension components. Two wrenches, the same size, all suspension components. And, uh, is the turbo bigger than on Can-Ams and Polaris? <laughs> I was going to be a smart ass here. Uh, I'm getting bigger designing this car, okay? And um, I'm eating more and I'm unfortunately not out working out. So the answer to your question is yes, the turbo had to get bigger too. Somebody said, I thought he said 33 inch tires, it's only 32s now? Uh, 32.5. Um, someone said, uh, the question was, I thought he said 33 inch tall tires. One thing we wanted to make sure is that we fit all racing packages right from the get go. And 
I, there's a difference between scoring the best in the desert and they can't really make up their mind. We didn't want to build a tire that wouldn't be legal, so we picked a tire right down the middle. 32.5, which that fits in the 32 inch rule book. Why only four lugs? Is that the industry standard? Why what? Just four lugs. Why, lo why four lugs? Okay, great question. Uh, why four lugs? Because I wanted to do something that was um, industry standard. The current double X that we designed has four lugs, which is four on one five six. Polaris is four lugs, four on one five six. So as we're going to bring new customers over to Speed UTV, I want to make sure if you guys already own mud tires, racing tires, paddle tires, all that stuff will at least bolt onto our hubs. You will need to check your back of your wheel from the mounting face to the brake caliper because we've increased the brake calipers. Uh, we've designed our own brake calipers here, so we've got some massive calipers. You've really got to watch your, your back of wheel to brake caliper outer face to make sure you don't hit. But the, the 12 millimeter uh, four on 156 wheels will bolt onto these cars. Another one here, uh, why uh, hydraulic power steering instead of electric power steering? Great question. Um, and the question is, uh, why hydraulic power steering instead of electric? Uh, I don't know how many of you guys have been out there before and shocked your power steering systems, but Max shocked his at the Mint 400 two years ago, and when it shocked it, you lose the power steering, couldn't save the car and rolled it. Um, that was the first thing that told me, hey, we need to be looking at this as we design a car. Um, the other thing is, at King of the Hammers last year, I broke my pointer finger because I had a bunch of load in the steering wheel and the electric system just said, nope and it fired back the other way and I broke my finger. So um, I wanted to make sure that I had the safest, most reliable power steering in the industry and hydraulic power, system, power steering systems have been around in off-road cars for as long as I can remember, especially ram assisted as well. Um, the U-joints on the electric power steering system were never intended to get that kind of load. To be honest with you guys, if you look at your steering U-joints that you use on a Polaris Can-Am, Double X, anything else, uh, those U-joints scare me and the amount of force that that power steering system puts into the wheels, um, it's scary. So I felt the right thing to do was put a hydraulic power steering system on it with as much hard line as possible with uh, relief blow off valves so you always have power steering but you don't blow the lines off so we'll have a built-in pressure relief valve like we've been using on the trophy trucks for call it the last decade as well as be able to put enough pressure out that you could put your power steering system up against a rock and slide your whole car over from your power steering so basically uh, we're making a car that is capable of going to king of the hammers or anywhere else i don't believe there's one koh truck in the industry that has electric power steering. There's no trophy trucks leading today in the industry that have electric power steering. This is proven stuff that we're doing. I believe Kyle LaDuke's Pro 4 has hydraulic steering on it. Um, all the NASCARs I've driven for the last decade have had um, hydraulic power steering. Um, the power steering pumps are reliable today. They're very reasonably priced. And if you put the, um, the shock loader or the bypass on it, uh, it makes them very reliable. It keeps the lines from blowing off them as well. So uh, it, was a, it was a little bit of a cost um, difference for us, but I felt if we're gonna go ahead and build the best car, we might as well put the best power steering system on it as well. Hope I answered your question. Um, live stream every Wednesday night. Um, stay tuned for our media channels for updates at Speed UTV. You can pre-order your Speed UTV at speedutv.com. I will tell you today, we have sold over 600 vehicles. Um, the first 500 four-seaters are almost gone. Uh, we're very close on being out of four-seaters. I will open up another limited edition. It won't be the same limited editions that the first guys bought, the first 500. Uh, it will be different. Uh, we will open that coming next month. Um, it'll be more of a a speed-based car with window nets and a, and a few other cool options, but it will not be the same vehicle that the other guys per, um, put their deposits on for the last seven months. So thank you for tuning in. I am gonna switch over to UTV Fails. 
I think it would be good for you guys if you want to stay on and, and pay attention to what we're doing and what we're watching out there. We have some answers to um, a bunch of questions and why we designed certain things the way we did. So I'll go to UTV Fails now. I'll flick through a few of their posts and videos. Uh, like I said, there's 99.9% .9 on there of things I would not do. Uh, one thing, guys, as you guys are out there riding, make sure you always have a spotter. If you're going to go jump off a jump, make sure you got a spotter on the other side. Make sure you're wearing a helmet. Make sure you're never drinking and driving. Make sure you have your seat belts on. I have seen some stupid stuff on, on UTV fails, but at the same time, we've been able to learn a lot of what not to do when designing a roll cage or what not to do to when designing the front suspension of the car so that we can make this thing the safest car possible for you guys out there having fun. Respect the car. This is gonna be a, a weapon that we're building. We are building a proper high performance car, but you guys are gonna have to ride it with common sense and you're gonna have to be smart, all right? This is, a, this is a performance car. We're giving you the Ferrari of the UTV industry. Give me just a second, I'll be right back to you. What's a VP discount for, remember? Uh, yeah, VP discount, what's the VP discount? It's for the end of the month. It is 20% off, and is that on Summit? Summit, was that right? On summit.com, and I will post the UT, or the VP uh, discount, which I believe is fuel lubricants, uh, brake fluid. Uh, they make some wonderful products that we are using on the Speed UTV. I'll get better at these every week as well. I'm gonna kind of just expand on uh, UTV Fails. It's a website out there, it has 200,000 followers. Um, another one that I use a lot, I wanna make sure I don't give love just to one. I use UTV Underground a lot, UTV Action Mag a lot. Um, there, there's a ton. Uh, if you go to my Instagram posts, it's all the places I go to get my content so that I can learn what we need to build to build you guys and girls, the best UTV in the industry. Uh, this first one here, um, this is a, a crazy man. And it, will I, if I click it, will it play? Oh. Sorry. Am I making a 35 inch tire? We will make a 35 inch tall tire. Uh oh. Not gonna be able to go on on this one. I gotta switch over to a different one, which actually is better. Just give me one second here. Sure, you show everybody your passwords. Yeah, <laughs> show my password. <laughs> give me just a second. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to the phone for this one. Oh, attached. I'm attached. I have a little bit of power. Still got a hundred. Well, I got a few hundred of you guys paying attention. Thank you. Give me a second here. How you guys doing? Give me a second, I'm gonna flick through here and try to get us back up on the screen here. Rev D. Yeah, okay. Oh, I think I hit the wrong one. Hang on a second. Just work with me here for a second, guys. I will be back to you. Might have cut him off on my Instagram. <laughs> yeah, lots on the Facebook, so. All right, just give me a second. We'll be back. And I'm going to flick this one back over as well. Uh, we'll use both of them at the same time. On the live feed, am I talking that long? I got one minute. Um, we'll fire it up again. Yep, go to go to Facebook. Go to Speed UTV Facebook. If I run out on the Instagram, go to Speed UTV Facebook, and we'll continue on through there. All right, finally we're in.
All right, UTV fails. Oh, cool, I can go to there. All right. I want to um, I'll address the first one first. Um, one thing I see right here is I see a guy with his arms out. Um, that's one of the reasons why I choose to always run a roof. Uh, don't, definitely don't recommend this. But one thing I see right here, when this car hits the ground, wham, all the suspension points are gone. If he would have been on the gas wide open in the air, those front tires potentially could have driven him out. But because of the material specs uh, on these cars and where the pivot points are, and the tie rods being on the back side, wham, suspension fails. The guy had no shot at saving it. If he would have been in the air on the gas, he might have been able to save it. Uh, let's go to number two, video number two. Um, we have seen this a lot, all right? And this is why we put the torque limiters in the car. Uh, this is video number two. He twisted his axle off right at the diff. Um, our goal for those torque limiters is at that point, you get a little bit of slip. It doesn't twist the axle off and you can continue to ride without being broken on the trail. Do they have all that horsepower? Uh, that right there is, a, as we're looking in right here and I can zoom into it, to it uh, that twisted the stub off, which Casey, I believe we showed twisted stubs last week. Uh, we have done this before. We're talking by experience. We know it's an issue. We felt like we needed to limit the torque. This will allow it to slip and hopefully not break your axles and CVs. Uh, this one here. Um, this is obviously um, a lot of people ask me why. Look at this car here. This car here is in good shape. Didn't roll over was not a crash, came down a dune, hit a sharp witch eye on the gas. People ask me on our cars, why did you put the tie rods on the front? Would you consider moving the tie rods to the back? My initial question is, have you ever tried to push a rope? One thing about tie rods in tension, they are 10 times stronger than tie rods in compression. So with the tie rods being on the front side, we would not have what we have going on here. Uh, another thing that we have, and like I said, this is just my opinion, uh, how I view things, what we're looking at as we look through other manufacturers, uh, we don't have ball joints. So one, you wouldn't have broke your ball joint, and two, you wouldn't rip your steering out of the system. But our car, you can uh, replace the front end without replacing the chassis. That's yeah, crazy. this is a, this, this right here is probably a total vehicle. Click on, click on the link, they show they replaced the whole chassis. Okay, I got the link in here. Um, so from that, from this right here, no rollover, uh, complete chassis replacement. Uh, one thing with the Speed UTV, um, is that not going to play or? It's a video, or speaker swipe. Swipe. Oh, swipe, okay. Uh, there it is, same car, like I said, this is not a totaled car. Uh, it definitely should not have been a total car. But as you can see, complete chassis change. Um, this was a, a new, as you see here now, uh, this guy has a brand new chassis because the front bulkhead was welded to the chassis means you had to disassemble the whole car. On a speed UTV, if you did that, if it broke, my opinion, it won't break, um, you would just be pace, replacing the front section of the vehicle. Uh, I've jumped along a couple. Uh, let's go to this one. All right, I'm gonna slide into this one here. Like I said, I went to UTV fails because it was obviously the easy, easiest place to find stuff. As we see here, we've got another broken ball joint. Uh, with the Speed UTV, we have patented rod end mono ball double shear uh, on the front end. Uh, this will prevent you, this car here did not crash either. This came down, hit a sharp edge with the wheel, wham, ripped the ball joints off it. This guy's weekend is over. This one here is, um, is, a, is a, I'm trying to figure out what we got going on here. I don't know what we have going on in the back here, but as you see, broken ball joints. 
Doesn't even look like the car rolled over to me. Uh, looks like somebody bolted on, this looks like an Articat Sport. It looks like somebody did something and made a, some kind of a four seater uh, for seats in the bed. Let me tell you guys, I do not recommend this. Please don't put your kids in the bed of the cars. That's not what they were designed for. I don't believe it's legal. I don't believe that people will allow you to do it. Please, 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 please do not, do not um, put your kids in the bed of these vehicles. I will get back there. Give me a second. I'm going to... Live feeds are down. Live feeds are down. All of them? Facebook still going? Facebook's still going? Yeah. Instagram. Facebook's good. Instagram timed out. Instagram timed out. Okay, we're going to continue on with this. Sorry, guys. I'm not going to show you my password. <laughs> um, I, I was on this one here. I'm going to go ahead and click this link. I'm going to turn my phone sideways, hopefully. No, it doesn't look like I can get the option. Uh, there's no other pictures there. I really don't know what this guy was doing, but please don't put your kids or your friends in the back of UTV. If it's designed to be a two-seater, use it as a two-seater. If it's designed to be a four-seater, use it as a four-seater or a two-seater. But don't make a two-seater a four-seater, please. All right, uh, I'm gonna roll into this one here. Looks like when I go this direction, my battery's gonna go dead. Spend a couple more minutes. Inner pivot points. Like I said, this is, this is just my opinion. Um, is that a front or a rear? It looks like a rear. Is that a rear? Yeah. Looks like a rear. Looks like he has aftermarket um, suspension points on here. Um, another reason why the trailing arm is much better than a five link. There's, I, want, I want to get into the trailing arm conversation just a little bit. I'll, I'll keep touching my phone here so it doesn't shut off on me. But one thing about the trailing arm is it doesn't have the five links and the five links are, the five link being above the center line of the rear axle. If you have a five link car, it doesn't matter what car you have and you side load that car, the car raises up. The roll center lifts the rear of the car, makes it a lot more tippy. The way the pivots are on a trailing arm, the way we've got the pivot arms done, when you side load the car, it actually pulls the car down in the rear. If you've watched some of these Articats on the short course track and why they put power down so well and why they corner so well is because the geometry allows them to do that. Another thing it doesn't have is nine inches of tire scrub like a Can-Am or Polaris. Straight up and down, you stay 77 inches all the way through your travel. On a Can-Am, you start at 72, you're really, your 72 Can-Am's a 64 by the time you get to full droop. Car's narrow and tippy down there. Uh, the loaded tire bounces you all over. Again, like I said, these are just my opinions. And this is why I believe the Speed UTV has the best suspension in the off-road industry. Uh, flick through, I uh, will do one more. Um, see if I can get this link here. Again, I believe, in my opinion, this guy had a shot. This guy here, he could have landed that if the suspension didn't fail. But again, by being rear steer, um, trying to push the tie rods instead of trying to pull them, make them very, very, very weak. Unfortunately, this guy didn't have a shot to save that car. I have seen this with all models that have rear steer steering. Um, it wouldn't be my choice for designing and building a car. And I promise you, you won't see us build a rear steer car out there. So if you're looking for a rear steer car, choose another manufacturer. You want to explain rear steer? Yeah, I do. I think you're talking about the rear tires. Like yeah, you want to walk around? We'll go, we'll go right here. Perfect. Right. Thank you for that, Casey. Let me talk about on rear steer. Um, the tie rods here on this, um, this race car here, as you see, the tie rods are on the front side. By the time tie rods being on the front side and the tires hitting a bump, the tire always wants to tow out. They always want to tow out when they get loaded, especially with caster built into the car. With a tie rod being on the front side, we're pulling on that tie rod. If you grab a string, you can pull on a string really, really hard. If you push on a string and you put it on the back side, you are now trying to compress your tie rod 
it's like I said, it's probably 10 times weaker in compression than it is extension. So this is what we're talking about. It's on the front end of the car. It's the tie rods being at the front. You know, people are worried, oh, what if I run into a stump? Don't run into a stump, be your first thing I'd say. Second thing is don't run into a rock. Pay attention to where you're going. But every proper race car I know and every King of the Hammers car, it's got front steer. It's what a UTV needs. That's why we have built it on our cars. Not only do we have front steer, we have double shear. Can you show us down here, Daniel? As you see right down there, double shear. What double shear means is we have a tab on top, tab on the bottom, misalignments in the middle. Same thing up here, double shear spindles. Tab on both sides. The bolt is not just a bolt sitting there trying to get broken off, ding, ding, ding. All suspension pivot points, double shear. All the bolts, if you look here, this has our speed bolt kit on it. All the bolts have the same size bolts on all bolts. All right? I'd rather have been a tie rod than replace a complete front end. Weekend's over. So as we've been designing the Speed UTV, please understand we have paid attention to a lot of websites out there. We've watched a lot of what happens. There's things that scare me out there. And there's things, the reasons why we have built a roll cage that is the safest in the industry. We have a full spine patented in our car, built in our car to make it safer for you and your family. We have the V-bars in the front. Everybody thinks those are intrusion bars, okay? So when a car comes over, you got the V in the front, people think those are intrusion bars, which they would work for that too. But if you think about it and you put your two two by fours up out in your roll cage, if you don't have anything holding them left and right, roll cage falls over, your head's sitting outside the car. Those V-bars in the front and the back, they work as our spine. They're connected to a middle bar. I believe we're the only UTV in the industry that offers a middle bar. The Textron XX has a middle bar. When I designed that car, I put the middle bar in there. There was many guys that wanted to take that, that bar out. I've even seen guys buy a car and take that bar out. And I just honestly shake my head. What are you guys thinking? You took the spine out of the car. Please use your head, be smart. Hopefully you choose a speed UTV and we will see you next Wednesday. Thank you.